Hey there, I'm Carl Lanning, Brazos River Charter School with This Week in History, specifically the week of June the 14th through the 20th. Well, on June the 14th of 1952, the keel of the USS Nautilus was laid. Uh, this was the world's first nuclear submarine. She would be launched two years later. The keel was signed by President Harry Truman, by the way. Uh, I, however, would like to focus on the man who was most responsible for this achievement. And I kind of mentioned to you him uh, last week, a fellow by the name of Hyman Rickover. May have been the most feared man in the United States Navy. Uh, Rickover immigrated to the United States through Ellis Island with his mother and sister in 1906. His Navy career began when he was 18 years old and lasted for 63 years. This made him the longest serving naval officer in the history of the United States, as well as the longest serving person in the United States military, period. Uh, the rules of mandatory retirement and the number of admirals that you could have at any given time were rewritten numerous times to accommodate him because he was considered to be indispensable. Uh, this is uh, him with another fellow that was considered indispensable, George Marshall. Uh, he is the father of the nuclear navy. Uh, it was it was run uh, <laughs> like a personal fiefdom in a lot of ways. Now, any time a candidate for a junior officer was a candidate for a position on a nuclear submarine, uh, or a submarine captain had to go through an interview process with Rickover. Now, this is from a PBS uh, special that was made about him. Uh, the, uh, the, these interviews earned him the nickname of Kindly Old Gentleman, which would be sort of like calling a very, very large man tiny. Uh, one junior officer candidate reported that when you came into his office and sat down, that the front legs of the chair were cut off so that they were slightly shorter than the rear ones, he said, which caused you quite a bit of discomfort after a while. The shades would be open to blind you a bit uh, one candidate who had graduated in the top 10% of his class was asked the question of why he didn't do better. Rico, his answer was, I don't know, sir. Rickover exploded into a stream of Major League profanity and ordered the man to be locked into a converted broom closet for two hours. He was then let back out and asked exactly the same question. He answered, I am stupid and lazy, sir. He got his posting almost immediately. Now, the process for captains was a little bit less formal, but no less exacting. Uh, Rickover met one particular candidate at a steakhouse. They ordered their steaks, and the potential captain, as soon as the steaks arrived, grabbed the salt and the pepper and started pouring them onto his steak. Uh, Rickover stood up and said, this interview is over. You made a decision with no evidence to support it. The candidate didn't get his captaincy for another three years. Now, finally, Rick Homer was inspecting a uh, newly built nuclear sub that was going to go on a shakedown cruise uh, very soon. He stopped right behind the reactor operator. When he did, he watched the man for a minute, and he started to reach up towards the control panel. When he did, the reactor operator slapped his hand away, whirled around, and got ready to really lay into whoever just was reaching for that panel. The first thing he saw was four Admiral Stars, and the next thing he saw was who they were pinned to. He had absolutely no idea what to do. He froze, uh, didn't say a word, turned around, and went right back to his work. They went on their uh, shakedown cruise. When they returned afterward, he went back to his billet, and he found an envelope with uh, Rickover's headquarters address on it, and he knew this couldn't possibly be good. When he opened it up, inside was a two-week pass with no dates assigned and a personal note from Admiral Rickover saying, fill in the dates and use at your discretion. It should be noted, by the way, that the United States Navy has never had a single issue, injury, or death in its nuclear submarine program. So, Admiral Hyman Rickover. Well, on June the 17th of 1922, 
a very strong friendship came to an end. Uh, in this case, it was between the self-described escape artist and illusionist, Harry Houdini, and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who was the creator of Sherlock Holmes and several other things as well. Uh, they were fantastic friends. They'd been mutual admirers for years. Uh, the, the, what became of the problem, what made them bitter enemies in the end, was uh, the issue of those who claimed to be mediums, those who claimed to be able to communicate uh, beyond the grave. Houdini wanted to believe in mediums, but his time as, a, uh, as an illusionist told him that these people were charlatans. It was too easy to fake it, so he really didn't believe them. Doyle was an absolute believer. As a matter of fact, his wife claimed to be a medium. Uh, well, Houdini and his wife, to prove to their friend Doyle that, uh, that it was a business that was full of charlatans, staged a seance, invited them over, staged a seance along with several other illusions, and then Houdini proceeded to show Doyle how the illusions and how the tricks were actually done. Uh, now, this is not one of the exact ones, but this is Houdini, and he's reaching under the table, and he's actually picking up a bell and ringing it with his, uh, with his foot. Conan Doyle was having nothing of it. He told Houdini that Houdini had spiritual powers that even he was not aware of. On June the 17th, though, Doyle's wife conducted a seance in which she claimed to be in contact with Houdini's mother. Further, that his mother had directed her in writing 15 pages to her son. Houdini read it and called her a fraud to her face. Turns out... Uh, the letter from his mother was written in perfect English, a language that she did not ever learn to speak, and it used phrases that she never used. Uh, the two formerly close friends never spoke again. So, the end of that one. Well, that's it for this week, but just to let you know what's coming up, next week, we will meet, arguably, the greatest athlete this country has ever produced. Thank you for your time. I'm Carl Lanning, Browns River Charter School, and we look forward to seeing you right here next week.